Hello, everybody. Happy December 14, 2020. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is a special edition of the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, Connecticut Coaches Roundtable. I'm pleased to have two head coaches amongst the boys' basketball side, and I'll first introduce a returning guest, Ryan Raponi from Lewis Mills. Great to have you back on, man. Coach, I appreciate I mean, uh, Chris, I appreciate you having me uh, on here, and uh, it's, it's nice to be on with a uh, you know, appear in the coaching profession, you know, and, uh, and throw some ideas out there and talk a little bit about, you know, where we're sitting right now. And the other coach we'll be mentioning right now is a first time guest on the Connecticut sports talent show. And I'm pleased to have a well-respected man amongst the game of basketball in Connecticut itself, head coach Nelson Mangachos. Thanks for coming on. No, Chris, thank you. I really do appreciate it. I'm honored that you uh, offer this to me and uh, I'm excited to talk about high school basketball right now. I do have to say real quick, Coach Mangachos, I did have to ask a fellow player I played college ball with that went to Immaculate High School, uh, Mike Hughes. I don't know if you remember the name. I do. I do. <laughs> I asked him a lot of questions about you, and he spoke high praise about you. He loved everything about you and what you've done for the high school. So I just wanted to get that out there. Thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. Now, guys, let's get down to business. January 19th, I'll stay with Coach uh, Mangachos here first. You know, the decision as far as if there's going to be a winter season or if there's going to be no season at all. And I think first and foremost, when you heard about that decision, Coach Mangachos, what was your first reaction? You know, obviously I've been listening to a lot of your podcasts here right now. And, um, you know, I might've been a little different. I was kind of excited that it was pushed to the 19th. And the reason for that was the season wasn't canceled. You know, we had a chance, we had an opportunity to play. Um, you know, the vaccine is out. Let's hope that we get it out as soon as possible. Um, hopefully things are good. And uh, hopefully we can get a season in on the 19th. I I'm real optimistic about it. I'm excited about it. And uh, I, I hope it happens. Coach Raponi, I know you and I have kind of gone, you know, back and forth about, you know, as far as with the season and with everything that's gone about it. And I know when you heard about the season being pushed to the 19th, I know you had an interesting take on it. Well, I mean, so my opinion is similar to coaches where I, I'm happy that we're going to have an opportunity possibly to play, you know, but the, the reason why we're switching is kind of actually showing itself a little bit more right now in school systems is school systems are now going fully remote. Um, I just got a message today. You know, I teach at Suddington High School and we're fully remote now until winter break, you know, and then when we come back from winter break, hopefully we'll be back in the building. Um, some of my players at school have been quarantined uh, during this whole process. You know, I stay in touch with them and, you know, they keep updating me on how things are going. And, and I know we would have had some real serious challenges and obstacles if we had started the season uh, at this point. Um, and I'm starting to really recognize that right now. I think a lot of us are. And like coach said, I think I'm just really excited to have the opportunity to possibly have a season and have this all clear up. And, and be in a better position on January 19th. I think the biggest thing as far as kind of looking the overall projection of this is that I think it allows, and I think why it was pushed to the 19th, like you both alluded to, is because of the time. And that's the one thing that since March 12th or 13th, that's all we've had is time. You know, we've been at home, we've been doing a lot of stuff, guys. But I think as far as the decision itself, and I'll stay with Coach Raponi here, I think allowing it to get to the 19th allows time to be able to see not just where the virus is, but also because of where schools will be. Because I know there was a survey put out a couple of weeks ago, I think on game time, but I could be wrong about certain, you know, they did a, uh, they, you know, they threw out a survey about, okay, what, what schools would play sports if they are remote and which ones were in the, you know, vice versa. And it was kind of about, you know, 50-50 in some way, about 15% said, you know, we'd allow practice, but not allow games. Yeah, and, and that would throw a lot of challenges into to the leagues, you know, and my experience in the CCC is having 32 teams all have to be on kind of a, the same page when it comes to putting together a league schedule, you know, and, and we've got the word that we're going to break it down into, you know, uh, four divisions, eight teams, try to regionalize it. Uh, and then maybe you have more of, you know, similar philosophy from those school systems when you're moving forward, trying to create a schedule. But uh, I, I think it would be a real challenge at this point right now with the way things are going with, like you said, the survey and a lot of schools possibly not participating. 
uh, especially if schools go remote and that has already started to happen um, and it's been happening. So hopefully when we get back to that point, I know that they're supposed to meet on January 7th and kind of take a look at how things are going to work, you know, on January 19th, but hopefully we're all in a better place as, as school systems and people are more likely to give it the go. Coach Mangachos? Yeah, no, I'll just add to that, you know, as a girls soccer coach myself. So in the fall, when we went to the pods or the, you know, South and North division, I thought it worked out really well. I really do. Um, I think it's the safest way to go. Um, if you stay regionally and play groups in your pods. So you're hoping, you know, towards the end of February and March, uh, things are a little better where we could have a league tournament and hopefully a state tournament. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I'm in the AD meetings for the state um, with the CIAC. And, 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 you know, you hear so much stuff about the CIAC, people are going after them. Um, but I can honestly say they want a season. They want a season. Uh, they're trying to do everything they possibly can to get these kids on the court um, or on the ice or whatever it is. Um, but I can honestly say the CIAC is doing everything they possibly can for our kids to have a season this year. I'm with you on that 100%. You know, I had Glenn on back before when the first decision was announced as far as what was going to happen with fall sports and football and et cetera. And I saw a lot of tweets saying that, you know, Glenn, who, you know, Glenn Lungarini, yeah, yeah. know, executive director of the CIAC, you know, that, you know, people were tweeting saying, oh, he wants to ruin kids' dreams and this and that. But it's that's far from the truth. There's more people making decisions. He's just the guy showing his face. There's other people out there. But like you said, I think a lot of, you know, they want to be able to play, but they also want to make sure that they do it in a proper way so people don't get sick. Agree. You know, obviously the number one thing is, is keeping the kids safe, you know, um, and then you could go towards, you know, keeping the referee safe, um, the scorekeeper and everyone that's involved during a game. Um, so, and I'll say it again, I know the CIAC with Glenn and uh, Greg Simon, they're doing everything possibly can to make sure our kids have an opportunity to compete this winter. Coach Raponi, a question that I think a lot of people are asking is if there's not going to be, because of obviously right now, I think it's 96% of the state as far as districts is in the red, give or take, you know, so if that ends up still being the case, even if let's say there is a season, for example, but they end up having like uh, Coach Mangacho has mentioned about North and South, different areas as far as being close by. Do you think there could maybe be a chance that there may not be a state tournament because of the districts and such, but there may be kind of what we saw in the fall with soccer and other sports? Yeah, I think that'd definitely be a possibility um, because they've already kind of went through that. You know, the, the CCC, you know, successfully went through um, in the fall and implemented a regional little tournament at the end. And uh, I think it worked out where the kids got to experience some competitive games. Um, and, you know, we all do want that state tournament. I mean, we missed out on it last season. Um, we were really excited about it. We have some players coming back that are really excited for an opportunity to compete um, and, and get into a, that type of atmosphere. But if we can't get that, I mean, I think we'd definitely be happy with playing a season as of what I've heard right now, it could possibly be 12 games. And like coach was saying, if, if we have to stay in a regional position, I'd just love to just compete against the teams that are around us and, you know, see, see which one ends up on top. That, that'd be fun for us. I mean, that's why we're in this, you know, to compete and to have the kids compete and, and bring out all those great experiences that they have participating in sports. Coach Raponi, have you had an opportunity to be able to talk to various coaches from the fall, no matter if it's at Southington, Lewis Mills, and just asking them questions about kind of what they dealt with in the fall? And if you do have a season, if it's 10, 8, 15, however many games that you can maybe kind of take what they told you if you've talked to those coaches and implement that into your program? Yeah, so I, I know some soccer coaches um, that are also basketball coaches, and and we definitely had some discussions on how things were going for them during their fall season. And I think we're, you always run into obstacles, uh, I think, in winter sports. I was thinking about it, you know, last season, during basketball season, we we had like three or four players, you know, in our rotation missed time for extended periods of time with, with illness. And, and then, you know, we always have the snow days and you always face certain types of challenges, but what they dealt with in the fall was, you know, losing a player because they were quarantined because somebody in their class, you know, had, had COVID. Um, and now 
they're sitting out for 14 days. And then if somebody on your team gets it or an opponent gets it, now you, you don't play that team. They have to change the schedule. So, you know, that, that experience was, was new. It was difficult, but they were able to get through it. Um, you know, and I think that's a concern. I know in one district that a lot of players went fully remote uh, and did not go into school because they feared being quarantined because of a close contact. And they were able to keep all their players, you know, available throughout the season. So there were different approaches by different schools and different sports uh, that happened. And obviously, as a coach, you're always out there as an educator and a coach learning from other people and, and kind of comparing ideas. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what we would implement ourselves if, if the situation arises. Coach Mangachos? Yeah, you know, well, I, I was firsthand and everything. So, you know, with, with us at Immaculate, we were very fortunate that we were able to get a full season with all the teams. Um, we did a lot of different things. You know, we did, you know, where kids obviously were coming down to the fields with masks, leaving without masks. We were having a 15 minute intervals where we had the kids leave before another team showed up. Uh, so we try to keep them far away from each other as possible. I felt personally a lot safer with the kids on the fields, knowing that we have an eye on them all the time, that we know they're doing what they have to do. But once they walk up that hill, I'm sure those masks are off and we have no idea what's going on. So me personally, when they're with us, I know those kids are safe. They're doing what they have to do. That's something that's been thrown out as far as the college ranks. I mean, I've heard when this first, as far as with the football season and other fall sports, we're starting to begin at the college level. There was arguments about keeping the kids on campus so that not just, you know, not just so they can play their sports, but because in some argument and I can see it and I'm not saying I'm for or against it, but they're in one place, you know, where they are, they, you know, strict protocols. And like you mentioned, coach Mangachos, once they go up that hill, once they leave the field, you don't know. I mean, nobody knows mask is off. You know, yeah. you, you don't know if they're with, you know, a group of people or not. Yeah, I mean, we saw in the NBA, you know, them going in the bubble, them always together, you know, they know what they're doing. And like I said, I felt the same way with our fall athletes when they were in school, when they were on the fields or, or you know, running cross country, we knew exactly where they were, what they were doing. You know, they were six feet apart from each other. They had their masks on. So I felt very comfortable when they were with us. Coach Raponi, now looking at it from the other side, if there's not going to be a season, and I've thrown, the, I've thrown this out to a lot of coaches I have had since I started doing this roundtable discussion, I think there needs to be a plan in place if there's not going to be, but at the same time, you know, one hand needs to wash the other. I think that's going to be where the CIAC needs to listen to coaches like yourself so then that way, you know, you can work with the players because think about it, if you lose this season – you lost the rest of last year as well. That's a lot of the, you know, lost developmental time. And you're going to need the time to be able to build that back up, but also be there for the players because the mental side has been so taxed from March all the way until now. And then well beyond that. Yeah. I mean, so I would love to just have an opportunity and, and, you know, I, I've been sitting at home, obviously watching basketball on TV, college games are on. My girlfriend lives been a great sport in terms of letting me just watch these college basketball games. She knows where I want to be. You know, she knows I want to be on the court coaching my players. And I would just love to have the opportunity to practice right now. That's why I just, every day I, I see on my, I have a calendar, you know, that says, Hey, practice would have been today, you know, five to seven. And, and, and that's kind of makes you miss it. And you miss the kids and you miss that interaction with them every day. Um, if we didn't have competition, if there was no season, I mean, and we were back in the school buildings, I would love the opportunity to have, you know, I don't know how much time they would be able to give us maybe, but with masks on, small groups, my players, you know, get together, be able to work on some skills and drills if that's what they see is appropriate, um, be able to play some inner squad games, j just to be around the players and have, give them the opportunity to be around each other. Um, you know, I know that they, in the fall, there were leagues that were happening, kids were playing, but, you know, as, as coaches, we know that we can't really participate in any of that. You know, you can go and watch, but you're not doing any coach and it's good for the kids to get out there and, and do these things. Uh, and they're staying active at certain places, which is great. 
but I, I would love that the opportunity to, to continue to develop the players too. Um, and that's the other thing you lose a whole year. You know, that's going to be tough for some of these guys, but obviously safety is the priority. And, and we understand that. Coach Mangachos, I think, you know, to go back to the question I asked coach Raponi, I think being able to be around your players because of the amount of stress and anxiety. I mean, we've seen the numbers as far as stress is up in young people, as far as, you know, as young as nine to 10, all the way until the teens, late teens and adulthood and such, it's gone up because of this virus. And there's a lot of stress. And I know even the suicide rate has gone up because of the isolation and not being able to be around people. And I feel like, if the CIAC, and I understand there was some good, there was some bad and some questions as far as the fall. If they could even, because again, we've seen in 2020, change is okay. It's all right to be able to try new things. And I'm not saying to full out blow everything up, but why not allow the coaches to be there for the players? If, you know, it's allowed because of protocol, corn, you know, the virus and everything, but allow the coaches like yourselves and others to be around the players, not just so much on the sports side, but just be there for them. Yeah, I, I, listen, I, I agree with Coach Ryan tremendously on that, hoping that we would have an opportunity to work with the kids sometime during the school year or even in the summertime. Um, if we're allowed to work with the kids, that gives our kids an opportunity um, for us to get in contact with some college coaches that might not have the opportunity to see them this winter. Um, give them the chance to develop a little more. Um, I know New York does it. A lot of states allow their coaches, you know, when we go to a summer league and, and Brewster or Carmel's there, the coaches out there coaching with them. Um, I would love that opportunity um, to give my kids. And, and listen, I'm not talking about, you know, we don't have to have 10 hours a day. You know, I would take four hours a day just to get the kids in the gym, to work them out, work on some skills and some drills um, and to get them prepared for next year or to get them opportunity where I could get some tape over to a college coach. Um, so this way they could get kind of introduced to them. Um, and even to my younger kids, my juniors or my sophomores who are way behind right now, you know, they have no game tape. Um, they don't have that contact with those college coaches. You know, I could call as many as I can and just tell them about certain players, but without the game tape or they're not really going to really listen to me. Coach Raponi, I think, you know, you know, like Coach Mangaccio said, you know, being able to, you know, have film to be able to show to college coaches is, especially for, you know, players that want to be able to play at the next level is very important. I mean, we've seen on the football side where a lot of college coaches were saying, I like the seven on seven. There's only so much I can take, you know, take. I need to see, you know, something as far as game film. And I feel like for you, you know, and other coaches as well in Connecticut, this is another problem, another obstacle away from the virus being able to get film out to coaches. Yeah, I'm glad coach brought up that point. Um, I, I just had a great conversation, you know, with one of my seniors last week. He, he went to a virtual meeting, you know, with one of the schools that he was interested in. And, you know, it was him and, and 10 other, you know, potential recruits, you know, going and getting information and, and doing the virtual thing. And, you know, and, and, and as coaches, you know, then we, we kind of reach out to the college coach and and they're in tough positions right now, too, the ones that I've talked to, because they don't know how many players are returning for them. They don't know what the eligibility is going to be right now of some of their seniors. You know, so they're really behind. And, and they all they apologize. One guy apologized. He goes, it took me a few weeks to get back to you on, on your player because I wasn't sure I was going to be recruiting many players this, this upcoming season. So, you know, now that I've, I've assessed some things with my players, I have a better idea, but like coach was saying, you know, kids develop from their junior year to their senior year, their sophomore year to their junior year. Uh, I have a couple players that have put on two, three inches, you know, and, and they've put on, you know, 10, 15 pounds of muscle and they're going to be a different player when they come back this season. And they may not have the opportunity to quite showcase that ability right now, you know, and you know, the, the priority is obviously the health and safety of the, of the kids. We know that. The, the mental and emotional portion of being a student athlete, you know, but this other thing is something that their future is kind of up in the air right now as well. And they, they're not sure how to handle it. We're doing the best we possibly can. Uh, but yeah, I'd love an opportunity to, to work with them and get some, some, some film out there at some point. 
I would even, I'm just going to add to that. I would even take, you know, two or three work weeks working with our kids and then give us two or three show, college showcases for just Connecticut kids. You know, you could do one in the Southern part of the Northern part, give us some college showcases where we're able to get all these kids together from across the state and kind of showcase them to the college coaches. I think, and that's, you know, let's go right to that. I've never even thought of that as far as, you know, we see it as far as with, you know, uh, you know, baseball at the high school level, you see all these showcases, basketball. I know you have AAU styles and all that. I see nothing wrong if it's going to be allowed. And let's say it's safe to do as far, because I would think, I, I would think it would, you know, it would happen in the summer and for that to happen, the virus, as far as with the vaccine, you know, cause I think it's June is when they're going to allow 18 and over and 18 and under as far as being able to get the vaccine. So if the showcase was in, let's say, late July, you know, August, that would kind of go right around the time where a school would be getting close. So kids would, you would think would be close by, but also too, that allows you to kind of almost have, you know, an off season to the off season to a work with your players. But like you said, coach Mangachos, allow the players who lost the time now in the winter to be able to get something out to the college coaches. And this is something they could tell the college coaches as well. It could give them something to look forward to because right now, you know, like the fall one, you know, for football on off on off um, this way, this gives the basketball kids something to look forward to boys and girls. And you know what they could do for hockey. They could do for indoor track, whatever it takes. It gives the kids something to look forward to. Coach Raponi, how do you like that idea about the college showcase? Cause I like it. Coach Mangachos brought it up. I know he loves it. Yeah, I mean, so I know that there, there's definitely other showcases that people put on, right? But, you know, if, if we were allowed, you know, in, in terms of the rules by the CIAC per se, to, like you said, have a couple weeks, prepare your players, and then have them go off to one that is, you know, sanctioned per se, you know, and organized um, in a professional way and in, in, in a way that benefits the kids, not only, you know, for basketball, but educationally, I think that'd be a great idea. Coach Raponi, I think, you know, again, to go back to the college showcase, I think the difference between, and I like the college showcase because it allows the Connecticut coaches who are certified. I think a lot of people don't understand that they're all certified coaches. I think allowing them to work with the players and I'm not discrediting anybody from AAU or the other teams or coaches, but I feel like allowing the high school coaches a chance kind of adds a little bit more juice as far as, as far as being able to get the film out and just talking to college coaches, because you're around these players a lot, you talk to them, you've seen their development. And I feel like that can kind of carry over and could also be an attractive piece because if you're a freshman who lost time and it's like, Oh, I should be playing in this because I may have a chance to be able to play going into my sophomore year and same thing for the other, you know, other between sophomore juniors and seniors, et cetera. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and the thing is, I would never discredit any, anybody that's given their time to coach. You know, I think that uh, AAU for kids that are in the travel ball for, for kids that are really dedicated to the game. Um, it's great for them to play in the off season and to get opportunities to be coached by different people and, and kind of, uh, you know, flock to different areas for talent and, and compare themselves to those types of players. But I think it would be very good in an organized sense coming from the high school coach who has the player in practice every single day, who knows what they're like in school and in the community, you know, where it's a little bit different in the summer, you know, you show up a couple times a week, you run through your hour practice, and then you go play games all the time. You know, that's not how college basketball is, you know, college basketball is you have to attend class, you have to attend workouts, you have to attend team practice. It's about responsibility. You know, it's, it's about being a good teammate, being accountable. And I think we have a very good look at how that player is in that type of atmosphere. Coach Mangachos, I think you kind of have something here as far as this summer league showcase. I think <laughs> that's definitely something you can put to the table and say, hey, Glenn, I have this nice little chip right here. What do you think about it? And push yeah, it you know what? And, and I'll just add to that. You know, Wilton does, Coach G does a great job. And he has each year a fall college showcase type event. Um, he has all four courts at the field house running. He has some college coaches there. It's an outstanding uh, um, 
thing that he does for our kids. Um, like I said, there's college coaches there. And I think we could build on that. I, I think it would be great for the state if we don't have a season. And of course, if it's safe. Um, but I think that would be great for our Connecticut kids. Listen, we have a lot of division one kids that can play in the state, but we also have a lot of division two II and three kids. Um, and I'll add academically, I know for our school is very important. Uh, so you got to just find the right fit academically and obviously athletically. And you know what, there's a lot of great division schools out there. Guys, this has been a great conversation. I do have a couple more questions to be able to ask, ask you guys. And I'll say what Coach Mangacho is here. Looking at, the, you know, if there is a season, let's go back to now if there's going to be one. Looking at your team right now, if there's going to be 8, 12, 15, however many games, how does that affect the Immaculate Boys basketball team? Well, obviously, first, we, we want a season, so we could care less if it's 12, 10, 15, whatever it is. Um, for us, you know, I'm more concerned about wearing masks than the number of games. Um, you know, we don't sub that much. We usually have five or six kids and we run with them and we've done pretty well that way. Um, but now with the masks, it's going to change everything. Um, you know, how they're going to be able to breathe with those masks um, is going to be completely different. Um, but we'll take whatever they give us um, and we're ready to go. I, I'm looking forward to the 19th. You know, we, we I meet with my kids every week on Zoom. Um, you know, and I tell them 19th's coming around real quick here make sure we're ready. Um, keeping them positive because I honestly believe we're going to have something on the 19th. As far as with the mask wearing and, you know, teams who only have five to six players that they usually stay with and their depth or bench is usually not as long. Will that kind of force you in some way? I don't want to say force because I know you would love to play all your players, but would that kind of maybe have you focus more on preparing the players be like, Hey, you, I know you're not used to coming off the bench that much. You're, you, be, you know, you better be ready because it's going to be a different season this year. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, every conversation I've had on zoom, I've told the kids, you have to prepare yourself. You have to start wearing a mask. Now you have to do your conditioning with the mask on. Um, it, it changes the game. I mean, especially for us, we, we like to run real quick out and, and try to get easy buckets. Um, but they're going to be sucking wind. There's no question. Um, you know, we've, we've ordered a bunch of different types of masks to try them out and see what works best for our kids. Um, but it's going to change the game, and, and I expect to play a lot more players this year. Coach Raponi? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Coach where it's, you know, we are a, a smaller team at Lewis Mills. You know, we don't, we don't have the 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guys in the middle, but we have a good group of guys around six feet. You know, so we like to spread the floor. We like to get the ball up the floor quickly. Um, you know, we, we found a way of, of pressing in the three quarter court list last year that really got us back in the games late. And we felt like we were well conditioned to perform well at the end of those games. Um, now I, I think we could still do that, obviously, but like coach said, might have to use a few more players this season. You know, you might have to extend your rotation, you know, from, from your eight guys to your 10, but it's a good opportunity, uh, for some of the younger kids, you know, to get involved and contribute to the team. I think too, it, it might be good for development. It might help us, but you know, that's, that's the thing with the mask wearing um, where we'll do anything obviously, but that'll be a little bit of a challenge. And uh, you know, I have a really good coaching staff um, and, and when they're on the bench, you know, they, they give me you know, substitution suggestions from time to time. I'm going to be really relying on them to check for fatigue, maybe a lot more this season, you know, than we have in the past. So you're going to have to utilize everybody, you know, in your program here that's that's on that bench or in that bench area, wherever we are, um, to try to help us out and, and get through some of the challenges. But I'd love to deal with those challenges if we have the opportunity. I'd take that. The mask wearing, I feel like, is kind of something where, again, it goes back to the change and having to adjust. You know, if I've learned anything as far as what 2020, 2020 has sucked in a lot of ways, guys. But I think – if it's kind of taught me anything and forced me, because I was a, I was a, a, you know, a young man, I'm 27, not old yet, but I was somebody who hated change. You could ask my girlfriend, you could ask my parents, you could ask my dog. I hate change. But this year in particular has kind of forced me to be like, all right, Chris, if you don't change, you're going to be put by the wayside in multiple ways. I'm talking about the media side, uh, just conversations, the way that life has gone about right now. I almost feel like if change is not going to be made as far if there's going to be a season if players have to wear masks I think 100% of them will say you know what I don't like it but it's a change that has to be made because I want to play coach Raponi yeah I mean we 
we really stress being adaptable. And, um, you know, coach, you know, he, he has a ton of years coaching. I know under him at the varsity level, I'm sure he's had to adapt his styles of play from, from year to year based on personnel, based on who you have. And like I said, even last season, you know, I was put in a position of certain guys just not being there for weeks at a time because of illness. So we have a little bit of experience with that, but this is a whole new experience. And the mask wearing is something that I don't think anybody loves. It. Now, nobody wakes up in the morning. I don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, I can't wait to put my mask on, you know, and, and, and go in there and teach four periods and, and talk into that mask. But it's what we have to do to be in the situation that we're in. I mean, as personally, I love teaching. I love coaching. So I put it on because I have to, uh, to be able to have the opportunity to do that, you know, and, and I've done some lessons with some younger kids, um, you know, in, uh, in, in some facilities that have allowed it, you know, just the small groups of four, you know, the Bristol sports armory has been really good, giving me the opportunity to go down there and work with some middle school kids. And they don't love wearing the mask, either, but they'll do it. They'll do it because they know they have to, to be out there on the court and I got to have it on the coach and we're just all getting through Kids are resilient. You know, kids are resilient. They're adaptable, maybe a little more so than adults sometimes. And, uh, you know, the, I, I think if we have to do it, they're going to be fine. Coach Mangachos? Bye. Yeah, you know, you know what? It was perfect what Coach said. You know what? The kids will adapt to whatever. What I'm more concerned about is us as coaches trying to yell and scream out to our plays and everything else we have to do with those masks on. So I'm more concerned about that. I'm not worried about the kids. They'll be ready to rock and roll. Hey, just pull the mask down like you see in football. I know. <laughs> then I, I see, I found it funny, guys. Every single time the coach yells, he seems like he always knows when the camera's on him. <laughs> then it goes right back up real quick. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, my wife even said I should get the clear shield. At least the kids can see what I'm saying because under that mask. And I said sometimes it's better if they don't hear what I'm see what I'm saying. Like the Andy Reid thing. He had, right. he had that full thing. And then it, I think it was the first game. Uh, All fogged up. Yeah. <laughs> but somehow it's okay because they still scored 50 points. So right, right. No. But guys, like, hey, we just about run out of time. But oh, Coach Raponi, you got something to say? Uh, I was just the college coaches right now. If you if you take a look, when they go to talk to the official, they put the mask back up because right. they don't want anybody to see what they're telling the official in that situation. But uh, yeah, otherwise it's coming down. Chris, before you go, I know Coach feels the same way I do. I, I want to thank you for everything you've done. For all the students, athletes in the state of Connecticut, um, you're doing an outstanding job. I look forward to getting on Twitter and seeing when your next podcast is on so I could go on and watch it. You've done a phenomenal job. You know, it brings me back to, you know, 15, 18 years ago when we had, you know, the press there every day. We had articles every day. You know what? Outstanding job. Credit to you and everything you've done for all of us. I appreciate that. Thank you. That means a lot. Being able to help out you guys and the players is why I wanted to do this. I will continue even when things do get back to normal, but being able to help you, you guys, the coaches and players, I do it for you guys. That's the only reason why. You're, you're welcome to open arms at Immaculate High School whenever you want to be there. I appreciate that. You know, I'll bring my cues with me. Got to bring them back. Per perfect. Perfect. <laughs> bring it. Coach Raponi, I really do appreciate you coming on. You know, I'm glad I didn't scare you off the first time. You're great to be able to have on. And plus being able to get Lewis Mills, which I know a lot of people don't talk about, but it's a nice, and I'm not saying little program by any means, no. but a nice little program that people will be talking about, especially now being in the CCC. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, they, good tradition there. And, and that was part of the reason I, I took that position over there. You know, they've had some, some winning teams, really competitive teams. Uh, they have a great travel program. Um, people are really cooperative, you know, athletic directors from the principal to all the staff there. Everybody's been great, um, you know, to this point. And I haven't been there very long, but, you know, I, I've just really enjoyed my time there. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come on here and uh, speak sports with you right now and, and coach being here too. This was really fun. I know one thing about Lewis Mills, you may not have the height, but those boys are country strong. I can <laughs> tell you that much. They're pulling hay and, doing whatever they got to do. And I'm telling you, they were, I played them in sports when I was playing baseball and soccer, they're strong. And I know people, you know, guys I played with took them very, very lightly. And I would tell them, don't take them lightly. They're strong guys. <laughs> and we learned the hard way because we lost. But, <laughs> but coach McGachos, 
thanks for, you know, thanks so much for being able to come on. And also thank you for the kind words as well as coach Raponi as well. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Now I'll wrap things up here in the Connecticut sports talent show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember CT stands for Connecticut talent and I'm on my journey to find them all. Have a good one, everybody and have a safe and happy rest of the day.